Hillary wanted to put up wind, wind. If you, if you have a windmill anywhere near your house, congratulations. Your house just went down 75% in value. <laughs> and they say the noise causes cancer. You tell me that one, okay? <laughs> you know, the thing makes it so... And of course, it's like a graveyard for birds. <laughs> if you love birds, you'd never want to walk under a windmill because it's a very sad, sad sight. It's like a cemetery. We put a little... We put a little statue for the poor birds. It's true. You know, in California, if you shoot a bald eagle, they put you in jail for five years. That was the president of the United States. Is that a real thing? That was the president of the United States of America last night at a Republican fundraising dinner. And there was just a lot in that one section. Uh -huh. But the specific point we noticed is one the president spent the least amount of time on, but he said it. The idea that windmills cause cancer. But for fact's sake, that is just not true. The Atlantic looked into this very theory and found that it is a fact that wind turbines em emit a low-level noise called infrasound. And an old theory is that infrasound is harmful to human beings. While the president's claim of cancer seems to be a brand new one, infrasound has been blamed for health issues in the past. It all comes from research that was done back in the 1960s in which a Russian-born French scientist, Vladimir Gavro, performed an unscientific study, to say the least. Gavreau claimed he found proof that infrasound harmed human health, but later researchers pointed out that Gavreau had zero evidence that could measure infrasound. But the study found harmful effects nonetheless. So what gives? Actual scientists looked at Gavreau's study and found that, the overlooked, that he overlooked the difference between frequency and volume. And while there are no studies showing that infrasonic frequencies cause any harm, the incredibly dangerous volume Gavreau performed his studies with did cause harm. Infrasound is not inaudible. It can be heard at very high volumes. It's kind of like saying baby shark is harmful to the human health after playing it at full blast through the speakers at Madison Square Garden <laughs> and bursting someone's eardrums. I think it is bad for my health, my mental health. And we are surrounded by harmless sources of infrasound all the time, from waves crashing against the beach, storms blowing wind, car engines, ceiling fans, city noises, take your pick. We experience it in all parts of our lives and there are no negative effects. But there may be another reason the president brought this up. Mm -hmm. Debunked conspiracy theory, that is what I'm going to call it. The president lost a lawsuit against the Scottish government over a wind farm now complete off the coast by his Turnberry Golf Resort, something he claimed spoiled the view from his property, but a court ruled against him. Just, Ali, I, I, I don't want to be... I, I, I don't want to go back there and do that again. Like, I that's just nuts. I don't want to be sassy about this. No, but it's ridiculous. The, the Atlantic wasted time debunking the theory but because Ali, the president puts it out there. that wasn't a dinner party entertainment and a stand-up comic. Correct. That's the president of the United yes. States talking about wind turbines yes. making nonsense up. That's correct. If it were stand-up comedy, that might be interesting. But it was actually real. So I want to get a little deeper into where these conspiracy theories somehow get from wherever they get to the president's mouth to a crowd of legislators. Uh, legislators. NBC and News uh, reporter uh, Ben Collins is with us. Uh, ben, w where does this, this conspiracy develop? So it started with money, as most of these things do. The fossil fuel lobby in Australia, weirdly enough, bankrolled a bunch of uh, conspiracy theories, kind of seeded them into the public discourse, not just on the internet, but in, in things, you know, like uh, city council meetings, stuff mm -hmm. like that. And then over time, it, people started to realize, like, maybe the science isn't great. They got checked out. The science, as you know, was not great. But it's so, it seeded this into the sort of ecosystem. And then there are websites, like this website called Natural News, which is an anti-vax website. They, uh, the creator of it also created a website to harass Parkland students, things like that. So hold on a second. They, I know, that whole second. ecosystem Stop. of fear, yeah. There is a website that... Any parent could look at called Natural News. Right, you'd figure that they'd be founded by right? someone who created a website to troll Parkland students. Yeah, it's called Hogwatch.com. And it happened after. That's sickening, Ali. Yeah. That's sickening. But they, they, those people who trade in fear, take this debunked stuff and say maybe it isn't debunked, right? And they take that idea and they spread it out. And then you see these like little, you know, these little community message boards, things on Facebook, it, websites, the, like pre-Facebook websites that say you know, we don't really want this wind turbine in our town. Maybe this website from naturalnews.com. 
is actually the truth about it. And so, so this is that. You can always find data to back up whatever argument right. you want. Right. You can, but as Ben has proved to us time and time again, that has reached PhD level in America, right? Yep. Doubt merchants or people who concede doubt has reached a PhD level because what does that you can mean? get. Because it's not, it's not trolls who mm, just know mm. nothing about nothing. This is sophisticated to the point that the President of the United States now says this nonsense in front of a crowd of people, and we know that there's a base of people who take what he says, and then when we deal Debunk it somehow. Some some right wing website this afternoon will post the idea that and guess what, though? we're laughing about people, wind farms causing some cancer. Some of those people are good Americans who think you should listen to the president of the United States, and it's just so dangerous for him to spread such falsehoods. Right. I think the same because we know the president doesn't really use the internet. He tweets. We know that, but we don't. We he doesn't like sit around and go to naturalnews.com. So that's the same issue that the president has that regular people have, right? They hear it, they're they on the golf course, they, right. they hear it from a friend, yeah. and, and they don't want a wind turbine in town either. So they hear it through this this. So it fits to fit the game. narrative. Yes, exactly, that's the whole point. All right, Ben, thank you, my friend. Sure, thank you. Ben hangs around some weird places on the internet, <laughs> I gotta tell he you. Does. All right, hey, MSNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there and click on any of the videos here to watch the latest interviews and highlights. You can get more MSNBC for free every day with our newsletters. Just visit msnbc.com newsletters to sign up now.